Okay. Now, I mean, the key thing to remember about the structure and function of the heart is the re that, like everything happens because of a of a reason. Okay. It's it, and you need to know that reason. Okay. It's not just everything happens because it's time to happen. Everything happens because of a reason. All right. So, um, let's begin. So there's some key things that you need to talk about. Pressure. In fact, pressure differences. People don't do this well enough. You need to talk about pressure differences, i.e. the pressure in one area is higher than the press pressure in another area. Not simply that the pressure in one area is high. Not simply that the pressure in one area is low or is increasing. You need to make your pressure differences very um, clear. The other thing that you need to talk about is obviously the chambers, i.e. where we are talking about. We also need to remember about the blood vessels. And most, well not most importantly, but also very importantly, the valves. Okay, now these are all related. Okay, but a lot of it comes down to this idea and the idea of the structure of the heart, i.e. the thickness of the walls. Okay, so let's go through that. So first, let's talk about diastole. Okay, so in diastole, Mm -hmm. In diastole, what we have is we have the pressure, so the heart. Okay, so the heart, all compartments really is are relaxed. So heart is relaxed. And because of that, remember the word because we are explaining. So the, the heart is relaxed. And so, so the pressure is lower than blood vessels. This is a key point. The heart is relaxed, so the pressure is lower than comparing the blood vessels. And because of that, the heart draws in blood. So the right atrium the right atrium, okay, in, because of the low pressure in the heart, the right atrium will be drawing in deoxygenated blood from the vena cava, and the left atrium, the left atrium will be drawing in oxygenated blood from the pulmonary vein or veins okay so the, this is what's going on here it's important to note that because the pressure is higher in the aorta and the pulmonary artery than the ventricles the semilunar valves are closed this is what stops blood going from the arteries back into the ventricles it's not just about remembering the key events and the names, it's about understanding the reason why. Okay, next. Okay, uh, a little bit of blood also goes into the ventricles at this point, maybe we don't need to worry about that. Next comes atrial systole. So the atria are going to contract, so atria contract. Atria contract. This is because, again, everything has a because. This is happening because of, of what's happening uh, at the sinoatrial node. Okay, so the atrial, atria contract because of events at sino, a, sinoatrial node. Um, we can go over that in a different video, but again, there's a reason for that. Atria contract, and because the atria contract, the pressure pressure in atria are, is higher than ventricles. 
very important point. This is what's going to have, explain all the rest of the events. So, the pressure in the atria is higher than the ventricles, therefore, the atrioventricular valves are open. And because the atrioventricular valves are open, blood is pushed or moved into ventricles on both sides. Okay? So this is important. AV valves open, blood is pushed, moved into ventricles. Uh, I would just add a point here that uh, since we're talking about the atria, atrial walls are thinner than ventricles, than ventricle walls, as blood is pumped or moved a relatively shorter distance and so lower pressure is needed. Just an additional kind of structural point there. It may be kind of beyond the scope of our immediate discussion. Okay, so because of atrial systole then, our AV valves open, so let's just label those. AV valves. And because they opened, remember the reason why, because they opened, deoxygenated blood moved into vent uh, the right ventricle, RV, and oxygenated blood moved into the left ventricle. And that's atrial systole. Now we talk about ventricular systole. Now, you may ask, well, what began the events of ventricular systole? Well, again, that comes down to regulation of the heartbeat by the, or regulation of the cardiac cycle by the sinoatrial node, or at least the events that began at the sinoatrial node. That's something that we cover in, in year two, but that explains that. So, uh, ventricular systole, what happens then is, you know, as the wave of uh, depolarization reaches the apex of the heart and spreads kind of upwards from, the, from there, the right and left ventricles contract. So the ventricles... So the ventricles contract. And when the ventricles contract, the ventricle pressure... The ventricle pressure is higher than atrial pressure. Okay? And because of that then, the AV valves close. So they're forced closed. And the semilunar valves, which are these guys, these ones right here, semilunar valves, let's label those. Running out of space, semilunar valves. So our semilunar valves are open because atrial pressure is, vent is higher than atrial pressure as well as it's higher than the pressure in the arteries. So I'm just going to add that here, that the ventricle pressure is higher than atrial, so the AV valves are open, but it's also higher than the artery pressure, so the semilunar valves are open. Okay, so the, atrial, the ventricle pressure is higher than atrial pressure, it's also higher than atri artery pressure, and therefore the AV valves are closed and the semilunar valves open. Now, because of that then, blood 
moves from ventricles to arteries, okay? And just one additional point here that the we've already addressed why the okay so the ventricles ventricle walls thicker due to higher pressure needed to move blood greater distance you got it okay so that's that's the key point here and we you know we can for the same reasons we we can compare the left ventricle wall being thicker than the right ventricle wall okay uh one additional point i mean we could mention is that we also have a separation of the right and left uh parts of the heart it's also a very important structural point this is the septum here now the septum is there to separate separate right and left compartments because what we need to do is prevent oxygenated and deoxygenated blood from mixing Why? Why? Because concentration gradients. Okay, if we prevent that blood from mixing, then we maintain uh, a high carbon dioxide concentration in the deoxygenated blood and a high oxygen concentration in the oxygenated blood. If we maintain that, then it it ensures that at the cells which require oxygen, there's a high concentration gradient for oxygen, and um, and there's a high con and and there's a high concentration gradient for the diffusion of carbon dioxide in the opposite direction. This can be tested by examiners in various ways. Okay, can you cover every single base in all your past questions? No, but. What you can do is have a very good understanding of this. That's the best preparation you can have for those exam questions.